Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk to you about alternating series. And so let's dive right in with a definition. And the definition says that a series in which the terms are alternating positive and negative is an alternating series. And everything we've really been dealing with so far in this course in terms of um, infinite series, all of the numbers have been positive. OK, uh, the root test, the ratio test, the comparison test, limit comparison test, all of these have positive terms. And now today we're kind of starting to talk about, well, what if some of the terms are negative? And kind of the most simple situation where some of the terms could be negative is what's called an alternating series where it flip flops. It's positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. OK, and it's a very simple test to see if something converges or diverges if it's alternating. And it is the following, that uh, an alternating series, and notice right here we've got this little negative 1 to the n plus 1. Uh, that's right here. Uh, and that negative 1 to the n plus 1 makes it flip-flop. So I'm assuming that all of the u sub n's are positive numbers, meaning that the negatives come from this flip-flop right here. And then you see the second piece is right here that the as you go along the numbers are getting smaller okay as the u sub n's are getting smaller and smaller and not only are they getting smaller they go to zero okay if all three of those things are satisfied the u sub n's are positive in other words it goes positive negative positive negative as a series and things are getting smaller and they go to zero. If all three of those are true, then your series, your alternating series, converges. If not, it diverges. Okay? Uh, so let's uh, now take a look at a very standard example of this. And that is uh, the alternating harmonic series. Okay? So let's look at a quick example. The alternating. harmonic series. And we've already shown in the past that the harmonic series diverges, but the alternating harmonic, let's take a look at it, sum n going from 1 to infinity of negative 1 raised to the n plus 1 times 1 over n. Okay, so if we were to write this out a little bit, uh, the first one we get a 1, then we subtract a half, add a third, subtract a fourth, add a fifth, and so on. Okay, so this is the alternating harmonic. So the question is, does this guy converge or diverge? Well, first of all, is it alternating? Certainly. Positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, and so on. Second question, are the numbers getting smaller as you go along? Yeah, one, a half, a third, a fourth, they're getting smaller. Do they go to zero? In other words, what's the limit as n goes to infinity of the one over n's? And in fact, it is zero. So this series converges by the alternating series test. And we're done. It's that easy. So if the limit of the sequence values goes to zero in an alternating series, then that alternating series converges by our alternating series test. And it's just that easy. Now let's talk about a couple of very important definitions. The first one is, what does it mean to converge absolutely? And what it means for a series to converge absolutely is think of the negative and positive signs on a series as being light switches. And some are positive and some are negative, some are on, some are off. Well, what if you turn them all to positive? Okay, so you have all these terms of your infinite series and you turn them all to positive. So it's plus all the way through. In other words, you take the absolute value 
of all of them, okay? So if you take that absolute value and make everything positive, what about now does it converge? If it converges and they're all positive, then when you turn some of them negative, it also converges. And I'll talk about that more in just a second. Secondly, uh, what about if you have a series and it does converge, but it doesn't converge absolutely. So a great example of that would be the alternating harmonic. Uh, the alternating harmonic we just wrote down, it does converge. But does it converge absolutely? Well, if you turn everything to positive in that case, you get the sum of the 1 over n's, which is the harmonic series, which diverges. Okay. So that would be a great example of a series that converges, but it doesn't converge absolutely. So if you turn everything to positive, it doesn't converge anymore. It needs its negatives to converge. Now, uh, that's the second definition, is what does it mean to converge conditionally? It means you need your negative signs to converge. If you turn everybody to a positive, it actually diverges. So conditional convergence means you do converge, but you're not converging absolutely. If you turn everything to positive signs, it doesn't converge. Okay. And also a quick little note down here is that if a series converges absolutely, certainly it converges. Let me show you why. Okay. So if if you have all these pluses and minuses and you think of it as I can turn some things to plus and some things to minus, what's the biggest you could ever make your series? So say that you have the sum of some guys, let's call them a sub n's. The a sub n's could be positive, they could be negative. Well, if I turn them all positive, that means I'd make some of the negative ones positive. I made it bigger. I made the series bigger than it was before. That means that this has to be less than or equal to if I turned everybody positive, right? So this is the biggest I could ever make it just by flipping negative and positive signs. This is the one I want to know about. And what's the smallest that I could ever make it? Well, the smallest I could ever make this thing is I could make it as small as the sum of the negative of the absolute value of the a sub n's. In other words, I could make all of them negative signs. That's the smallest. Well, if this guy, the sum of all the positives, converges, then this is just the negative of that. So that converges as well. And so this sum, the sum of the a sub n's, is trapped in between those two values. So it must converge. So if something converges absolutely, then certainly the series itself converges, and that makes a lot of sense. One other note to say about alternating series, sometimes it's kind of nice to see this little picture. The alternating har harmonic, we already wrote it down, but it looked like this. It looked like, um, sorry, it looked like one minus a half plus a third, minus a fourth, plus a fifth. And sometimes there's a question of like, well, how do you know that something like that definitely converges just because the terms are going to zero? Well, let me show you. Let's look at a number line real quick. And let's say we start this little process at zero. And then I just add the first term. If I add the first term, I shoot up here, and let's call this one. So I'm at 1. Then I subtract a half. So I go back here, and I'm sitting at a half. Then I add a third. Then I subtract a fourth. Then I add a fifth, subtract a sixth, add a seventh, and so on. Eventually, we get to some point. I'll call it star. And that is what this series is converging to. And you can see if these numbers keep getting smaller and smaller, I have no choice but to kind of hone in, and they go to zero. I have no choice to hone in on some value, and that is the value that the series converges to.
So alternating series whose terms go to zero have to converge because of kind of this picture proof that I just demonstrated. And if something converges absolutely, then the sum of all the negatives converges, and that means that certainly the series itself must converge because it's trapped in between the two. Okay, let's look at some examples of how this works.